It's that time of year you've been waiting for. The time when we get together. Put on warm sweaters, make cocoa, sing carols. Although, do people even sing carols no, anymore? No, no, no. It's, it's no. It's that wonderful time where everybody gets together and they all send in presents their... and warm wishes and people's terrible, terrible Christmas cards. And oh yes, yeah, snow. We got just dumped on with a snowstorm here. So Noah, yeah. I'm I'm not talking about Christmas. It's the Q and A season finale time. Oh, are there Christmas themed questions? Just roll the intro. Hello and welcome to 21st Century Cinema. It's the season three finale. It's the podcast about film and the film industry. I'm one of your hosts, Joseph Delavecchia, and joining me today, all the way from a foreign province, where I'm pretty sure their internet is still dial-up, it's Mr. Noah Shepard. You say that. I did have dial-up till I was like six or seven years old. Actually? So like we did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, oh I, my have, God. I have distinct memories of dial-up internet. Like, this is... Yeah, I'm basically a 90s kid because I grew up in Newfoundland. <laughs> I uh, I really like the uh, the joke that I make, which is whenever like I just can't process something or, you know, when like your brain's just like fuzzy. I just yeah. say my brain is making dial up Internet noises right now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, no, no. Like I have I have my own memories of those noises. It's pretty mm -hmm. it's pretty wild. Yeah, I, I like very like vaguely remember them. Like if I hear them, I remember being like maybe like four or five, like just like that on a computer screen maybe but like oh yeah no we had it we had a, yeah. a significantly longer <laughs> today is the q a our season finale um sadly ava could not join us due to a uh, last minute commitment that she had so all good we'll see ava next well in the new year not next year but in the new year for season four and me and Noah will be here today answering your questions looking back on season three talking about season four and we have some things to share and check in on so it's gonna be a great show tonight um, first up, you might notice that the audio quality is better in this episode. That's because uh, we've got some new mics. God, now. What? You have I wanted to mic. talk about you've my been, mic. Yeah, yeah, I have yeah, a new mic. I had to change the way I was sitting. It looked like I had tits. Okay. Um, yeah, so I have a new mic. Um, we're trying these out, and if these mics are very successful and they work really well, we'll probably expand on the other hosts having them. But the sound quality seems to be really good so far. And that's my new mic. I'm glad, also, I'm glad you're Noah. Doing your mic. Yeah, I finally got some new editing software um, now because I've been making the change off of my laptop over to my desktop fully. Got rid yeah, of my laptop. So um, I'm now using DaVinci Resolve. And uh, what's really yes. great is so I only had a very little bit of experience with DaVinci Resolve using it on a different computer. So when I went to set it up for myself, Noah, as you know, I'm a very big avid supporter of Final Cut. I love Final Cut. It's like the only Apple thing I like is Final Cut Pro X. I thought you were an avid supporter, but I <laughs> think... Pun, punny, very that's punny. From, Thank you. That's from editing humor, you editors out there. Anyways, <laughs> what I found out was was that you can actually select between like um, Avid, uh, Premiere Pro, Final Cut, and like all these different like their way. They're all their layouts are different. So like I prefer like the way you can like edit certain files and the organization in Premiere. But as for the actual like timeline look, I prefer Final Cut. And DaVinci, you can set that all up to be like that. Ooh, cool. So I've literally now have taken like what I like and what about two different editing softwares and I've essentially made my ideal editing software. So what I'm using Avid? the free version. Sorry? What about Avid? Fuck off with Avid. I still use so, Avid. Yeah, because you're working in the industry. You're working in journalism. That's why you're still using yeah, Avid. Yeah, but not video. I work in radio. That's true. Anyways, though, um, I really like it, and if I'm going to keep using it for a little bit, and if in uh, two months, if I'm still really, really liking it, I'm probably going to buy the full. But anyways, now that I have a new editing software and I'm not limited by just something cheap and that I couldn't really use, I can finally start re-editing uh, our episodes again. So as you noticed before, the, edit the episodes had like the most minimal edits as possible for like the last three episodes. Um, but yeah, so starting with this episode and into the new year, we'll be back to our regular edits. Stuff will be cut out. There will be bonus stuff on Patreon. And um, yeah, when Noah um, gets really close to the mic and makes us all wish we weren't listening to the cast, uh, that will happen. Like this. I now have to edit that. Thank you. I now have to make a note of this time code and go and edit that. So thank you. Good. Thank you very much for that, Noah. 
So yeah, that's the new mic. Anyways, um, Noah, let's talk yeah. about my night last night before we get oh, into the Oh, God. Q&A. All right. Well, you so, have the floor here, buddy. Uh, okay, whenever... Sorry, this is a quick interjection. I don't even know if I'll keep this in the edit. But whenever somebody says you have the floor now, I automatically just think of Hamilton and the cabinet battles. Oh, that's fair. I'm going to yeah. quickly grab something to drink while we're doing this. So, mm-hmm. Joe, you can start. Okay. Thank you, Noah. So, um, on the last episode... Uh, we had Mr. Jamie Rabonel on. We absolutely love him and love having him on the show. And afterwards, when we ended the show, we were talking a bit in the video chat before we uh, wrapped up and left. And Jamie mentioned, as he mentioned multiple times in the episode, that he had seen lots of movies on millimeter prints and that Licorice Pizza, um, the new uh, Paul Thomas Anderson film, was going to be debuting for Canadian audiences for the first time at the TIFF Lightbox um, in a few weeks. Uh, so he asked me if I would want to go with him. I was really interested. Ava was too. So we made plans with Jamie. We got tickets and we were going to go see Licorice Pizza on 70 millimeter and be a part of the first ever Canadian audience to see the film. And there was an interview Q&A at the end. So we were really, really excited. So the day was already a very hectic day for me. Um, I sadly lost slash maybe got stolen um, my brand new pair of Ray-Bans, which was very oh. heartbreaking for me. Yeah, I had, that was, that's how, that's how the day was starting off. Um, that's not good. It wasn't good. No, it wasn't good. But yeah, so the day was just also very quick and hectic for me because I had like a bunch of things to do before I had to get to Toronto and we were going to take the Go Transit just because A, the weather was bad. Like wind-wise, we had some really, really high winds here. They mm. closed down parts of our highway. That's how bad the winds were. We've had some We've had some bad weather too here. We got hit with a snowstorm a couple days back. Yeah. So yeah, so for us, it was just like, um, like we should probably take the transit. Um, and so I had a bunch of things to do because we have to leave early to take the transit because the transit would get us to the station in Toronto. And then we had to walk about 15, 20 minutes to get to the TIFF light box. So we planned it all out where we would have time to arrive at the station, have time to eat because uh, the station has a food court and a few restaurants in it. So we'd have time to eat. And then we would have time to get to the TIFF light box at around 6.15, 6.30, somewhere in that bracket. And the movie started at 7. So we had more than enough time. And so we get to um, uh, the first ghost station in Hamilton where we live. And uh, and we're, we're perfectly fine watching some, some YouTube, listening to some music. And we get to um, the edge of Oakville, beginning a Mississauga area at a station called Clarkson. And at this station, they make an announcement that everyone has to get off. There is a police investigation at the next station over, and they're not letting any trains come in and out for like you know indefinitely. What, do you know future. what the investigation was about? I still don't know what the investigation was about. Still, what, don't uh, what, um, uh, you want me, what you want me to look up right now? No, what the police, no. uh, yeah, Clarkson, Clarkson. Oh, I can look it up. You can tell your story. Yeah, poor credit go is where it would be. Yeah, that's poor where credit. it was yesterday. I don't know if you can figure out where it was. You have your, your, your journalism sources, though, I'm sure, but yeah. So anyways, we um, uh, we get off at uh, Clarkson and they announce that they've got a shuttle coming. Uh, they're going to have a bus shuttle to take everyone to Union Station, which is a station in Toronto, and get them there like express, no stops in between. And I was like, okay, that that's perfect. Like, So we checked the time. At this time, it's probably around 5, 5.30. And so we checked the time and it's like, uh, yeah, you're going to, um, sorry, it's around 5. It's around 5 o'clock. It's around five o'clock and we check the time and it's going to be like an hour drive on the bus, but it will like, we'll, we'll make it there still on time. We'll get to union at around six, six 30, 15 minute walk. I'm like, worst case, I have to just like eat some popcorn or something at the movie. Like that's because I'm hungry. I haven't ate. So we're waiting outside in the freezing, freezing cold waiting. And as we get to the area where the bus is, we notice that the train before us had people get off and the train after us had people get off. And it's also the night of a Toronto Maple Leafs game in Toronto. So there's over a thousand people now all wrapped around the go waiting area up a hill over a bridge and into the parking lot waiting to get onto a bus. And we're waiting for like 20 minutes. Finally, a bus shows up and it's just one and it leaves with a bunch of people. And we're like, yo, what the fuck? So then the go bus people start like coming around and talking to people and they tell people that bus shuttles are coming every 20 to 30 minutes. So from where we're at in the line, it's going to be a two to three hour wait. A two to three hour wait at 530. It's around 530 now. And it's like, okay, yeah, it's like, okay, so it's going to we won't get on at them thing until 730 to 830 somewhere in there. And then it takes us an hour to get there at 930. The movie starts at seven and ends at 930. 
And I'm like, so we don't make it. So we were talking to Jamie. We went back and forth for a little bit about going or not. Jamie really, really insisted that we come. And so we had checked out Uber rates and they were around $60. We didn't really want to do that. But we were like, okay, fine, we're going to go. So we called an Uber. Uber comes. The Uber now, because everyone was ordering Uber at the time, got super inflated. So it was double the price. So we now have to take this super expensive Uber. The driver is terrible and also like couldn't find us for 20 minutes for some reason. We were standing in the exact same place. So what did we you finally give him? get sorry? How many stars did you give him? I didn't I didn't review him. I didn't review. Him. Didn't I don't know. I cuz I don't know how Uber works. My first time system? using Uber. The, that's your first time using Uber? I don't use Uber. Yeah. I, I usually drive everywhere. I lived in I lived in Toronto for 2 years. You've been there your entire you lived life. You lived in Oakville. Used... You lived what? in Oakville for the 2 same. years? Calm down. You lived 30, Same 40 thing. minutes outside of Toronto. Yeah, who gives okay. a shit? Who, uh, did still, Uber's in the area. Okay, but you also need to remember, I had my own car. Remember? Yeah. I picked you up a bunch in it, and I drove you places in it. Took you yeah. to take groceries every week. Remember, remember this? I had a car. You did not take me for groceries every week. Most okay. days I walked. Okay, I took you for groceries, though, every so often. Still. Like, you did. I had a car. <laughs> had a car. You were, you remember this car. Okay? It was originally a white Cobalt. It then became a black Nissan Versa. Yes. Halfway through, remember? Remember that? That switch? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I remember that. It's still a black Nissan Versa, by the way. You miss you missed the cobalt. You know yeah, that you know that car got me made fun of so much in high school because it was a two door coupe and nobody yeah. liked having to climb in through the back. Like people called it oh, the bitch mobile. Uh, eh, you are a bitch. Fuck off, Noah. <laughs> so um, I do uh, miss the cobalt sunroof though. The cobalt oh, was a shit car. I enjoyed I the sunroof. I enjoyed the first time I ever visited uh, visited you and the uh, to help your family with the Christmas tree and um uh, the entire we went to leave the next day or the same day um and the entire thing was frozen solid like it was in a box of ice. You could not see the cracks in the door they were just ice the cobalt yeah i remember scraping off the door handle yeah you had because i tried to and i couldn't get it off you had to scrape the door handle for me yeah i remember anyway, that. you were saying <laughs> yeah we we had a crazy adventure that day you came you came to film me for a project right yes because we went to dq to film yep. for that project that you were doing that little like documentary style thing about me and then we were also going for the Christmas tree. So I was like, you want to just come for that? And then we'll go back after dinner. And you were like, yeah. And we went We went to John's for dinner that night, right? That little restaurant in Niagara Falls? Yes. Yeah. Good food. So. Good food. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting what? so many. No, I miss you so much. I miss you too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, you were saying. Yeah, I was saying. Um, expensive Uber. First time yeah, you'd ever taken it. Yeah, expensive Uber. First time ever taking it. Guy cannot drive. It was just go break, go break, go break. We both thought we were going to throw up. Took us an hour and a half at that point. We get outside at 6.55 at the TIFF light box, okay? Five yeah. minutes before, Jamie tells us they've pushed the movie back by 10 minutes because of everyone, like, being late and everything, blah, blah, blah. So we get there. I have no time to eat because the concession line is going from the second floor down to the first. So we just have to, like, go in, rush into our seats, sit down, and watch the movie. We watch Licorice Pizza on 70 millimeter. Wasn't that great. Okay, like um, I, I gave it a review. Do you want me to read you my review that I, I wrote? I, I, I saw it. Um, it's up to you. I, yeah, I'll read. I'll read it on the pod. You know, yeah, let, let, let people know what. Why I Why not? Read. I know Jamie really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. He very much did. Um, okay, here we go. So, Licorice Pizza is very obviously a love letter to the '70s. The shots are beautiful. The performances, especially from the newcomers to the industry, are fantastic. The film is full of humor and heartfelt moments. While this gives the movie the base to be the best film of the year, sadly it falls short as it misses the most important ingredient: plot. The film has no real driving story. Events just happen, and they are essentially the same event over and over with different decorations. The characters do not grow or change, even though you think they're finally going to after every fight or reconciliation. It feels uh, it feels like the film is trying to capture the feeling of angst and being a teenager, but it really falls flat. Also, the movie is justifying a romance with a 15-year-old and a 25-year-old, which just isn't cool. If you've liked Paul Thomas Anderson's films before, you'll probably enjoy this one. But if you're like me and don't understand why people liked Boogie Nights or why Phantom Thread got an Oscar nomination, this film is definitely not for you. 5 out of 10. Here's the thing. I enjoy movies about nothing. Um, one of my teachers once said, uh, my acting teacher, um, they said that, uh, they're like, yeah, I just enjoy watching movies of women doing nothing. And I was like, you know what? I've never, I've never connected that love of just movies about nothing. Well, your favorite much. TV show is the show about nothing. 
That is one of my favorite TV shows. Yes, mm-hmm. I, I'm yeah. almost. I'm. I'm. I'm through. I'm in season five right now. Ooh, how are you enjoying it? It's great. I love it. I'm almost yeah, a marine biologist, so and I know oh, about that episode, and I, I just I can't episode. wait. That is the best episode. Um. So yeah. Anyways. So yeah. So we saw this really subpar movie, and then we had to like rush back. I still didn't get to eat because we had to like make a train to get back and everything. And anyways, we ended up getting home at eleven thirty at night. I hadn't had anything to eat except for a small junior chicken sandwich from McDonald's at like noon that, that day. That was all right. I had to eat. Yeah, like this small two dollar sandwich, chicken sandwich that wasn't that was McDonald's. So I just, yeah, I got home and I ordered greasy pizza and chicken wings and I ate my heart out. And it wasn't even that great, but it was food at that point for me. <laughs> and I went to bed and then I got up this morning. I finalized stuff for the pod and now here we fucking are. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> season four. Season, season four. four. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So the next time there's a TFCC movie outing, it will be when you come down to visit Noah. It'll be the three hosts, and we'll be going to the local theater here that I can drive to <laughs> around the corner. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that that's that. That there that, that was there the you go. Night. What that's a journey. What, what a journey. The journey did not beat the destination, and the destination did not beat the journey. Both were terrible. Um <laughs> it was nice to see Jamie. It was nice to see yeah, Jamie. Hi Jamie, you if go. you're listening, it was nice to see you. Um yeah. Okay. That's licorice pizza. Um <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a lot more than licorice pizza. That's a lot more. Anyways, um, let's get into the QA. So we've got eight questions here, Noah, that we're going to go through. We're going to answer. And yeah, and the last one is going to, you're going to learn a little bit about my past Ooh. if I haven't already told you about this stuff. What's up? Shocked. All okay. Right. Also, you're really missing out, uh, listeners, if you're not watching the video version of this podcast over on YouTube <laughs> on all of our great expressions and like the uh, funny things God. that we do. So yeah, um, check it out on YouTube. It's in the links on our uh, social media and it's in the description below hyperlinked. Check it out. Yeah. Okay. Our first question comes from at Elsom Wise. Wants to know if we have a favorite British indie film. Noah, do you have a favorite British indie film? It depends on what qualifies as a, specifically as a British indie film. Let me just look up the best British indie <laughs> film. So I can see what I have seen. Um, one thing you'll find out is I... Um, I don't often look at who, like who produces or who makes the movie. Mm-hmm. More so, I'll look at the directors and who's in it. So I don't actually know a lot of what are uh, what are when people are like, "Oh, that's a pretty cool indie film," and I'm like, "That's indie. That's an indie film." Yeah. So that's where we are. All right. Okay. So <laughs> I did research for this beforehand, and I found out that it's list the Imitation Game with Benedict Cumberbatch is listed as an indie film, and like I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't personally, um, uh, you know, I wouldn't personally say that it is a British indie film, but I guess it's counted as it. So if I had to, if it is technically one, it would obviously be the Imitation Game. That's um, fair. But if not, um, Fighting with My Family is an okay movie, and um, yeah. Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. Um, honestly, I can't remember if I liked that movie. I saw that movie so long ago. Like I saw that movie back in I think twenty. Oh, train spotting. Is train spotting technically? Yeah, it's on the yeah, list. It would be train spotting is really, really good too. Yeah, yeah train spotting is really good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry for I, I apologize for to whoever asked this question, but I am so woefully unprepared. Joe does not give me a copy of the questions beforehand. I'm sorry, Noah. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but next up, Noah, this question comes from a friend of yours, uh, Mr. Mike Pollock. Yes. Um, he wrote friend, in wait, only a friend of mine. <laughs> I told I've said it before on air. I'll say it again. I have very mixed feelings about Mike Pollock. Mike, I love um, you, buddy. He wants to know what our thoughts are on Kevin Smith and his movies. Oh, that's a that's a good question. That's, that's a, a good very question. Nice it's a great question. question. A I can't wait to nice talk question. about this. Yeah. Um, so uh I love I love Kevin Smith. He's yeah. such a great guy, he's, he's such, such a great cool nerd. Guy. Such a cool guy. Um, he's always just so, so like down for things, and I love that. Um, I love the Jay and Silent Bob movies, they're absolutely fantastic. Yep. Um, I love Dogma. Dogma is a great yep. movie. Um, Chasing Amy is probably his best movie he's ever made. Yeah, Chasing Amy is incredible. So I know famous. Mike's a big fan of Mall Rats. 
Mall, I was about and, to hear that. Mall Rats yeah, is absolutely Mall fantastic. Rats. And I also want to just point out, like, Mall Rats is, it's such a great coming of age movie and it's so oh, well yeah. contained and it's just its own thing. See, Mall Rats is an example of like, like, I love coming of age films and that's what Licorice Pizza was trying to be. And I guess it technically is, but like, you know, like Mall Rats is also like kind of like about nothing. It's just about like a, yeah. it's about a day at the mall. Well, that's why like, I like, I, I was saying before why I like, but and it's also it, why I like Kevin Smith. It does it well. And like the characters do like grow and evolve though. still like, there's still like this like story to tell where it doesn't feel like there's really a story being told in licorice pizza for me. So it's kind of like my different, I just wanted to point out that difference there. But what I also love about Mall Rats is that Stan Lee has a cameo in it. He does. Which is fantastic. And yeah, but uh, Kevin Smith's movies, I absolutely love. They are absolutely. ridiculous. Um, yes. Films some of them are nothing. some of them are really really Mall bad. Rats. Like um, uh, yoga hosers is no. Have you seen that one, Noah? No, I haven't. Oh, it's um, not. Would you count Tusk as his movie? I knew that was coming. I, in the back of my mind, I'm like, He's Noah's going to bring up Tusk. Noah's going to bring up Tusk. He's technically yeah. involved. I wouldn't count as one of his movies, but he is involved in Tusk, and that is another example, I believe, of. Well, it didn't. It didn't. That movie get started on a podcast. They were just talking about the most ridiculous, like horror movie they could make. When I first found out about this movie, it was from you telling me that story. So yeah, well, there you go. That's that's my source for how it got started. <laughs> that's um, also my my source is also my own story. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. But, um, yeah, no. Uh, Kevin Smith is really great. He brings a lot of fun movies. You definitely have to like his style, though, and you have to like what he does, the stories yeah. that he tells. Um, yeah. And I like though how it's about nothing. Yeah, and I like though how they they get to be interconnected. They tell some fun stories, but there's still a plot in them, even though they are about nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, there's just so many fun actors in them. Matt Damon and Dogma, fan fucking tastic. Um, <laughs> ben Affleck and Chasing Amy, and then showing up in the latest Jay and Silent Bob. It was it's so so great. And Absolutely. Yeah, like I have, I don't really have that much bad stuff to say about Kevin Smith. Just sometimes he makes some really great fun weird movies um clerks how did i not fucking talk about clerks oh my god yeah, i was gonna clerks. say i was waiting for you to get there oh my god clerks how did i forget about clerks um yeah clerks one and two are fucking fantastic yeah, movies they they're are. so so great i have a movie sweater and there were pop-up movie re- movies restaurants here in ontario during covid and i but i got from the hamilton one and the food was like this like really like it was this really good disgusting fast food like it was it was the food um yeah so yeah no um Clerks 1 and 2, fucking amazing movies. I can't wait for the third one. And Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Kevin Smith, great. Has some bad ones. Who doesn't? Um, but absolutely love his work. Yeah, no, I think you covered uh, that pretty pretty well there. I mean, like I was interjecting, I, I love movies about nothing. And Kevin Smith makes movies about nothing. So how could I not like Kevin Smith? Yeah, no, just, and it just seems like a very cool guy. Um, he, I single-handedly credit him with introducing hockey jerseys to punk culture as well so good on him (laughs) him and his friggin islanders jersey so yeah yeah no no kevin smith cool guy all right yep we're both in agreement on kevin smith um next question uh comes from elson wise again they sent in two questions uh they want to know noah what's our least favorite movie trope i'll go first here um i've read it up before on the cast I, i ranted about it to you i've ranted about it to everyone I cannot stand Deus Ex Machina, and technically it shouldn't can. even be technically it shouldn't even be a trope. But I'm counting it as a trope because of how much it fucking happens. Okay, Deus Ex Machina, for those that don't know, is when something in the plot happens for no good reason, or like there's no real reason for it to happen. There's no explanation for it. it just it just happens to conveniently serve the plot in that moment, and so we can get to a certain point that we want to get to. It's lazy writing. It's lazy filmmaking. I can't stand it, and I can't stand how often I see it in movies and how often people love these big blockbusters and these these even these superhero movies, and there's just so much Deus Ex Machina, and it bothers me so, so much. Just put time and effort into your screens. Like, just Respect, respect cinema, respect the culture, you know, even, even someone who makes a, a movie that could be relatively bad and, you know, not great, or even something I don't enjoy, at least some, m- most of the time, sometimes there's no deus ex machina, you know, you've actually put time into your script, even though your script is crap, you put time into it. <laughs> That's apparent. Thank you for that. Give, give, um, give me, give me an example of a script that does not have a deus ex machina, but is crap. A script that doesn't have a deus ex machina. But it's crap. Um, licorice pizza. No, I, you can't just use licorice why? pizza. Why? I can. That's something the first else. Thing. Okay, something that freshly <laughs> came into my mind. Okay, I need like a moment here to think about it. You go ahead. Tell me about your favorite. 
will be over here racking my brain trying my to... least favorite trope i don't know if it's my least favorite but one that i've really get annoyed with now recently i'm so sick of liar revealed stories like it always happens the same way like there's a couple in the recent years that i've really liked like klaus is one of them but there's a lot i'm just really tired of the of the especially when it comes to like relationship movies or stuff like that i'm really tired of the but you said this thing and it turned out to not be like we all know how it's going to play out over and over and over again and, and that just gets a little old for me um any other tropes like uh... i've got a movie you got a movie what is yeah it? you know that i hate the favorite i think it's absolutely crap i don't think it's well you written at all favorite. but there is there's no Deus Ex Machina in that movie. Like everything that happens makes like sense for why it happens, you know. Yeah. I'll, I'll get, um, I'll get that. The recently I um uh, for an acting class, I recently did my um uh we studied a book backwards and forwards. Theater people will know it. Um and it's about just sort of the creative process in general it works for actors, it works for writers, it works for directors, but basically it talks about how in a script every Every action should make sense. Like every action, one action happens and then another begins. Like every action has its equal opposite reaction. No, not that. that <laughs> is, that's the laws of physics. <laughs> so what it is is like like an action is not. Um, an action needs two parts. It needs the like initial part and then the ending part. And the ending part can always be the initial part of another action. So like Joe. I, I I call you mean names, and then you cry. That's one action. But then you cry, and I feel bad. That's another action. That's basically how that goes. So that's talking about how like you make things that way. But the second part of the process is to do that backwards. When you do that backwards, it basically, you need to train yourself to read things backwards. Which is, so, Joe, you're, I feel bad. Because you started crying, and you started crying because I called you mean names. Like, there's only one specific action that could cause what's happening. And that's how you make your plots make sense. Because there's an unlimited amount of actions that can happen from one action. You know what I mean? I, I, I call you mean names. You could do anything. But when we go backwards, that's how it limits. So it, it's just a cool way of thinking about it. And um, I feel like that's a good way to make sure your scripts aren't shit. Next question comes from Jetho dot underscore age dot underscore. They want to know what's in the box. What's in the box? Gwyneth yeah. Paltrow's severed severed head, right? I think. To, did they use a George Bush head? I think it was from like some other movie. They had a leftover prop and made it. It was like a a prop of George Bush's head. I, 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 I don't know they, what you're talking about. George, let me find this, because this is this is a real thing. I'm not just making this up. Is it? Is George it? Bush head seven. Oh, no, never mind. It was in, uh, it was in um, Game of Thrones. That's what it was. Yeah, Game of Thrones, when they put one of the heads up on the spike, one of them is uh, they used to prop a George Bush's head for it. And um, uh, people got mad because I guess they would get mad. Uh, but yeah, that's what it was. Not not seven. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> next question. Yeah. So. It comes from my mother, Noah. Ooh. She wrote Phil. in. Yeah, Phil wants to know, Noah, would you rather host with Joe or his mom? Joe, why isn't your mom on the show more? Um, I honestly, well, only you can answer the second one. And I think that's pretty obvious. It, it, I mean, it's Joe, I love hosting with you, but it's Phil. All of us love your mom more than you. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, very obvious. Just so you know. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, my mother will come back on the show, though, at some yes. point, I'm sure. It's, it's inevitable. But yeah. Okay. Love you, mom. Next. Um, next up comes from um, Katie. Katie had Yay. to send us in a, a question. Um, Katie also sent us in something sarcastic. Yeah, look, look at you looking over there. Hi. Hi. Yeah, she's waving from the other side of the room right now at me. Um, Noah's waving at you now. Why am I doing this? It doesn't matter. Um, 
Katie wrote in a question and she also wrote in for another section that we have after this where she's trolling us. But this one, she's actually being serious with her question. Um, Katie wants to know who our least favorite actor is, Noah. Ooh, I, I have uh, this, like, there's always, like, the Sandlers and guys like that. But, like, I'm going to put that aside and I'm not going to talk about yeah, I'm thinking more overrated in, like, my answer. Yeah, exactly. Same. Now, I will say, even before all the stuff happened, I'm I, I'm going to make a real controversial statement here, Joe. I don't like Finally, Kevin Spacey. It's... <laughs> but, no, even before wow, all that shit. Sh <laughs> no, I don't. Like, I, I, even before all that shit came out, like, I just don't like, I don't enjoy Kevin Spacey's acting. Mm -hmm. I don't like him. But that's and once again mm. there's and the, uh, there's more reasons why that's heightened actors who uh, i don't i personally really can't like. stand schwarzenegger but that's just because he can't act that's fair God, um i can't i'm real i'm real sick of a couple actors i'm real sick of chris pratt but i think everybody is yeah um, it's just that fatigue and that he's playing the same character and everything real sick of tom holland um mm, I'm, I'm i'm still okay with tom Tom Holland keeps getting roles that he should have no business playing. Um, I didn't see Cherry, but he's fine as Spider-Man, and I know people are upset about Uncharted, but I've never played the game, so I can't voice an opinion. Oh, it's absolutely ridiculous that he's Nathan Drake. It makes absolutely no sense. But that brings me to another actor who I just hate watching. I hate watching Mark Wahlberg. I knew that was going to be it. I, knew I it hate it. watching Mark Wahlberg. Now, I don't like Russell Crowe that much either. But I hate watching really? Mark Wahlberg. D did you watch The Nice Guys? No. Okay, you should watch The Nice Guys because he's actually really, really great. I love him in that movie. Yeah, I don't know. I just Russell Crowe has never really done it for me that well. But no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. Mark Wahlberg, hate him, hate him. Yeah, not crazy on Wahlberg. Terrible um, actor, insane human being. Have you have you seen uh, Andy Samberg impersonating him on SNL? Um, I don't think so. I'm. I need to link you after this. It's All just, right. it's one of the funniest bits. I like ever. Andy Samberg. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Andy Samberg. He does an amazing Mark Wahlberg impression. Um, you know who I am, uh, think is overrated. And I said this in the last episode and like everyone got mad at me. Uh, I don't remember who it is, but Amy Adams. Okay. Uh, I, I, uh, Amy Adams is fine. I don't have any. any exactly. There are some things like, like in Arrival. I love her in that. I think she's so, so great. Yeah. But then like, you know, there's nocturnal animals. There's, um, uh, she freaking Lois Lane and the DC movies. Like I just, I don't know. I see her and I'm like, eh. eh. Fair. I don't like Maggie Gyllenhaal. I'm gonna be real with you about that. I don't like Maggie Gyllenhaal. I've seen her. I don't think I've seen her in anything other than Batman. No, oh, yeah, no. I don't like Maggie Gyllenhaal. Honestly, I think it's more so. This is gonna be so mean. But I think it's more so her voice. Like her voice bugs me. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Fair. Yeah, that's I fair. know that my mom hates Will Ferrell. My mom will not watch anything Will Ferrell. Oh, uh, Will Ferrell, I, his movies are terrible, but I like them. Mm -hmm. One of those things. In any event, some of them are good. Mm -hmm. Other guys is really good, which is funny because it has Mark Wahlberg in it. And I fucking hate Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> you know who I'm kind of getting a bit of fatigue from seeing and everything, but I like him. Like I like him as a person. I like watching him in interviews, and I think he's a good guy and a funny guy. And I and I generally like like his roles, but I'm just seeing him in so much. I'm starting to feel fatigue from him. Who? The Rock. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I completely yeah. agree. Completely yeah. Agree. But like yeah, I, no, I, I but... like The Rock, but like I don't. Yeah. I, I'm but, trying uh, I'm to get to the point to where I'm like, Dwayne, he take really does. Off, please. He take really does off. play the same person and everything. And he's and he's in too much. I think he he's is. gonna be really good in Black Adam, though. I I really have high hopes. Yeah, for him in Black I hope Adam. I hope that goes well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know you won't agree with me on this, Noah, but I'm not very big on John Cena. I think he, Peacemaker is like the role for him. I think he's fantastic in that role. But outside of that, what else have you seen him in? Um, just like a bunch of comedies. He carries blockers. He's I don't think Blockers is that great, does no, it? Because if you're carrying a movie, it doesn't movie. matter if the if the movie if you're carrying a movie if the movie's bad, you know. He's the only like, to watch it. I I enjoy John Cena's acting. I think he's just a goofy guy, um, and that really adds well. But yeah, no, he's incredible as peacemaker. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's the greatest peacemaker. Um, okay, our next question, Noah, is if you could exist in one cinematic universe, which would it be and why? Oh, I don't know. 
Oh God, <laughs> these are. <laughs> I need time. I need time. Um, one cinematic universe, definitely not Marvel, because one yeah, no. everything would be gray, mm -hmm. and two, there's a lot of horrific shit. I would honestly love to live in the Ready Player One universe, but after the uprising, I would just really yeah, love to go to the fair. Oasis. I just want to be in the yeah. Oasis, you know? You know it just fair. it looks so cool. Like it's so great. I, I would absolutely just love to live in like that virtual reality scape where anything is possible. That's fair. Yeah. No, that the, oh, that's a really good choice. What? Where mm -hmm. do I the Lego movie? <laughs> the Lego that gets a good one. I, I love I love Lego. Yeah, I would like want to live in the Lego movie. I would I, I would want to go hang out with Lego Dick Grayson from the Lego Batman mm -hmm. movie. So great. I agree. Yeah. That's so great. Now I'm ready. Now I'm moving. Come on, Batman. Let's get grooving. Such a yeah, great moment. Um, okay. Our final question, Noah. And this is the one now, as I said, is gonna pull back the curtain on me a little bit. We got um a message from at Quinstar31. And Quinstar31 said this. And uh, after I am um, uh, read it, you you try and answer the question, okay? Is The Pact the best worst movie of all time? And is Quentin the most inept villain ever? All right. I uh, I haven't seen The Pact. You want to know why you haven't seen The Pact, Noah? Why? Because it's my grade 12 student film. This came from my high school film teacher. <laughs> My high school film teacher, Mr. Corey Quinn, reached out to, over Instagram to send in and ask if The Pact is the best worst movie of all time. And if yes. Quentin, a I, I, villain that I played in another, in one of my friend's um, uh, <laughs> movies, uh, student films, is the most inept villain ever. Well, I'm so, absolutely changing my answer to 100% yes. It is by far so, the best bad movie of all time. Let, let me tell you about The Pact. Yeah, okay. Pack. Okay, okay. So the, I'll, pack, I'll the premise, you know, I'll invest. The premise, sure the premise of the pact is that there's these two guys in high school, okay? Best okay. friends for like the longest time, whatever. And they both uh really like the same girl. And so, but they don't like they don't want anything to come between their friendship. So they make up it's it meant to be a comedy, by the way. This is a comedy. Okay. And so they decide that they're they're not, not gonna date her, they make this agreement, they never will. Okay. Mm -hmm. Five years later. One of the friends dies in a really tragic car accident. Yeah. Okay. So he dies in a really tragic car accident. He's hit by a drunk driver. And so now his other friend like puts together the funeral and everything. And a bunch of people from high school come. And the girl is one of them. And at mm -hmm. the funeral, they connect. And they realize that they both liked each other. So they slowly start to date. Now the friend from the afterlife is so mad about this that his unfinished business is that he's going now to try and interfere and break up the relationship. So these strange like ghostly paranormal encounters happen to the couple as they're trying to navigate through dating. And they end up uh, getting married and everything and he just like the, the ghost is just completely devastated and crushed. So finally um, uh, after they get married and before they're going to leave town and move at the end he goes to the grave to see his friend one last time and talk to him. And over the grave, he's crying and he's like, you know, I just want my best friend back. I miss you so much. And in this like dramatic, sad moment, we reveal in flashbacks that he was the drunk driver and killed his friend. That's terrible. That is a terrible twist. It's a terrible twist, but it's that was a terrible twist. No, it's um, not. I would not. That was, that was the fact. I will not invest money in this. This is the <laughs> worst, worst movie of all time. <laughs> absolutely okay. definitely not the best wait, so here's the thing though definitely not. the script we wrote for it was pretty great none mm. of the actors <laughs> though wanted to actually learn their lines so the movie isn't this is why the movie is terrible it's entirely oh, improv the, the dialogue is entirely improv <laughs> and um uh, one of the worst scenes of the movie is the proposal scene so in this scene we originally weren't able to film it in time for the first deadline in the rough cut. So in yeah. the rough cut, it's a first person perspective proposal thing. And the original plan for it was that the ghost is like whispering into the guy's ear and possessing him and making him say like this absurd stuff. Well, it was far too dirty, including anal play jokes that we couldn't use it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I said, this got this production got out of hand. Um, oh boy. So we instead, so we then, for like the final cut though, we are able to actually film. We just needed that for the rough cut. So in the final cut, we're able to film it. 
And so I was like doing a bunch of stuff at that time because I was also working on another friend's movie as the vil I was the main villain. So my one thing, I just, I never asked them to really do anything except to show up and do their lines. But I asked one thing from one of the actors and I said, I need it. We need an engagement ring. And I'm like, I don't care if it's a plastic ring you find, whatever. And I'm like, you just need to bring something that works as an engagement ring for the scene. Can you handle that? He's like, yep, I got you. I got you. And I, gave, I told him a week in advance. Ring day call. of, day of, I see him. And I'm like, and his name was Kyle. I'm like, Kyle, you have the ring for tonight. And he's like, yep, I got it. It's all good. We're going to meet down in the room after school. We're going to film it. It's all good. I got it. Man shows up with a fucking slinky. <laughs> the proposal scene is shot with a slinky. Oh. And like it falls off her hand and like slinks out. <laughs> and then there's a dick joke about that. And that's the proposal oh. scene. Can we? Yeah. We're going to have to have a TFCC special. Where we where watch we, the pact? Where we watch the pact. How long is it? It's 20 minutes. Yeah, so yeah, we should do, we'll do a TFC special where me and you and Ava, we sit down and we can watch your two student movies. We can watch mine and my friends, uh, mine and my friend slash roommates, uh, Jared's uh, two, we have two mockumentaries. Actually, no, uh, you know what? I'll put the one that he made there too, because I'm in it. So it'll be three, three, uh, two mockumentaries and uh, like a short nice. film. So yeah, that was what my uh, high school film teacher decided to write in about. Okay, next segment. Um, we asked you, the viewer, what song should be in a movie but isn't? And two of you responded. And one of them was Katie trolling us. <laughs> so the serious answer we got is The Night by Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons. Yeah, it's a good show. Okay. Katie decided to send in My Ordinary Life by The Living Tombstone. <laughs> Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think uh, I think we should make a living tombstone musical. No, a living tombstone musical. That's your idea. Yeah. Yeah, it opens with just mercy. Yes. Oh, obviously. No, mm. no, 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 no. That's the climax song. That's Joseph. the climax song. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Noah. I'm glad. I'm glad this episode has gone so well. Yeah, because... it's, it's gone off the rails. I didn't expect oh, it. Oh, yeah. Way. No, well, you have a very exhausted Joseph from yesterday. You have a day off Noah who's really unshaven and yeah, also really exhausted. Unshaven. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is great. Okay. Great. Um, Noah, let's start to wrap up. Sorry about season four, Joe. Our plan was to come back stronger than ever in season four with our usual Oscar nomination episode that we used because Oscar noms would come out around middle of January. So the end, we would do the episode at the beginning of that week. And then for the end of that week, it would come out. So we'd be yeah. right on top of Oscar noms and that would be our big return. And then it would usually give us about four weeks off to digest, um, digest, um, whatever, fucking hell, um, to, to regress and come back. Oscar noms are in mid February this year. Yeah. And the Oscars are in late March. Yeah, no, it's a weird, it's all it's a very the weird now. time. So yeah. usually we would have our nomination episode in January, something in the middle of February, and then beginning of March, because Oscar would be at the end of February, like we'd start off March with the Oscars. Let's be how we would do it. So it looks like this year, it's going to be a bit different. Yeah. I have no idea what we're doing in January. February will be Oscar noms. I have no idea what we're doing in March. And the beginning of April will be the Oscars. Yeah. That's how it's going to be. It looks like. We have no idea what episodes one and three of season four are going to be. I can tell you what two and four are. We've got a bunch of ideas in the pipeline. Um, we've got movies that shaped us with Noah Schaefer we want to do. Yep. We've got um, uh, the new technology that Disney and Lucasfilm has implemented into film and television. That's going to be really big uh, now that Marvel movies are starting to use it and Star Wars is using it a lot. We want to talk about. Yep. Noah has a horror episode he wants to do. Yep. The horror episode. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's what I can think of off the top of my head. I'm sure oh, there's many more. The one that we just planned just just today. And of course, our watch along. Yeah. Yeah, our good old watch along. That'll yeah. be a fun one. That will be a fun we'll one. We'll do that for the new year. Now, that sounds like a good way to start off the new year is to yeah. embarrass myself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't even know if we can, like, I have, I know that the pact we can probably do, but honestly, the inside job is so bad. There's a family friendly edit that exists of it. Like we had to do two edits of it. There's the there's the actual movie, and then there's a family friendly version of the movie. No, we're we're doing um, both. We're doing no, it. Joe no, gets canceled, Noah, Joe gets canceled. Noah, it will get me canceled. Oh, these like uh, I'll like, cancel these, you on the podcast. It'll make mm -hmm. great viewership. Like these, these, yeah, these um uh, 
these jokes were made mainly to just, I need to point out for the inside job, the jokes were made to show how terrible Quentin was and how, like, he wasn't all there and how he wasn't really, like, realizing what was going on. It could definitely be perceived as offensive. I'm sorry about that. It was very much, though, just to show off how terrible this character was. We wanted you to hate and be annoyed by this character and everything he did. Were you? Yes, it's a terrible character. All right. Thank you so much for listening to 21st Century Cinema. This has been the season three finale. Uh, me and Noah are going to go sleep now for four weeks before we come back with another season. Yes. Um, Noah, uh, where can the people find you? What are you up to? People can find me on Twitter at ShepherdNoah14, which has become less of my own Twitter and more of a work Twitter. So if you ever want to see what I'm up to, just follow along there. And also, of course, you can listen to me live on the radio most weekday afternoons, as well as Saturday afternoons at 590 VOCM. You can listen at VOCM.com, or if you're in the St. John's area, you can listen at uh, AM Radio 590. Or if you're in the Marystown area, CHCM, I believe it's 7, 740. And um, we got a couple of ones all over the island. So, yeah, you can give me a listen there. Um, and that's about it. That's uh, You can try. You can track down my Instagram, um, <laughs> at Sheprecht. That's, uh, but I'm, it's a private account, but for the most part, I accept people. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, also, I want to point out that if you want to get in touch with the podcast, Noah answers all no, of our emails directly no, on shepherdnoah13 at gmail.com. Stop giving out my email. You're going to have to edit that out again. Edit it at it out. gmail.com. Edit it out. I do it not want my identity below. stolen. We had a giant security leak here in, in, uh, in Newfoundland with our health system. Do not give my email away, too. Shepherdnoah13 at gmail.com. Cut it out, Joe. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, I, as everyone knows, I'm working still with a uh, cap can. Things are going great over there. I've got my, my sweater on. My oh, merch. We, we got, we got some nice merch in. I've got like my sweater and my, my sweatpants right there. If you're on oh, the video, geez, you can, that's you some nice merch. Yeah. Yeah. We got, we, we got, um, no, I can't, but if you oh. want me to send you merch for Christmas, I'll send you merch at Christmas Ooh, gifts. You know? so We've got, Christmas. okay. What do you want? Go on the website, go look at what we have. Um, All right. yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it's uh, going really great over there. We're doing lots of really fun stuff, especially with the year starting to wind down. We've got a giveaway going on right now, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, just go check us out at Capcan Comics. For me personally, I'm at at the one and only JDV underscores in between. Um, on Instagram, on Twitter, I'm at the one and only JDV. You can find me there. You can follow the podcast at 21st Century Cinema on Instagram at TFCC Podcast on Twitter. You can search both of those into Facebook and you will find our Facebook page. And if you want to support the show, once again, Patreon is going to be coming back strong with a bunch of bonus content in the new year. So sign up for our Patreon right now. It's linked down below, patreon.com forward slash TFCC. And you can also order merch. The Shut Up Joe shirt is still selling for some reason. I don't know why, but it still is. Why? That's, it's um, because it's an incredible piece for anybody who's ever met Joe. The Shut Up Joe shirt's incredible. For anyone who's ever listened to this podcast and just thought to themselves, Shut Up Joe, mm -hmm. absolutely go get yourself one. Legitimately, I know people do this all the time where they show up their merch and they talk about how great it is. Incredibly comfy shirt. Incredibly comfy. I wear it after work a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it, I will say they do fit a little big. So take that into account with your size. Mm -hmm um yeah but we've got we've got shirts hoodies pillows tapestries um notebooks every anything you could honestly imagine exists and we've got different styles of shirts and sweaters too which is really really great so get what you feel the most comfortable in um but yeah shut up joe it's available on our t public store hyperlink down below also on our socials you can find it there um and in the new year we do hope to have noah schaefer design us something new also for some merch um which is going to be really exciting Yep, season four starts in January 2022. We look forward to seeing you guys then. Uh, I don't think I missed anything, Noah, did I? I think you're good to go. Did you hyperlink the podcast? Everything is hyperlinked down below, including the video version of this podcast if you're not already watching it. And if you are watching the video version, the exact same links are down below as well. And you can even find uh, audio versions from our audio website, which is our Buzzsprout site. Uh, so yeah, check us out there. And I do want to give a shout out to um someone i know kelly lewis she is a friend of mine and we made her spotify rap this year did we 
Yeah, we're on a Spotify yeah. wrapped? Yeah, I think we were her number two. Why did I nobody think... tag me on Instagram about this? We're on a Spotify I wrapped. Think so. I think, yeah, she, we were either her second or third, but we made her Spotify wrapped this year. Ah, oh, that makes me so happy. I'm yeah. so happy to be on someone's Great Spotify wrapped. Um, I can't believe you waited 12 days to share that with me. <laughs> I forgot about it. <laughs> I'm um, busy, Joe. Yo. You're I'm busy. Really, I'm really excited though that we did that. See, uh, big big also, strides for TFCC. Joe, Joe, I want either the zip up, the quarter zip sweater or the baseball shirt. Okay, send me your shipping address. Sounds good, buddy. Okay, all right. Thank you guys so much once again for listening, and we will see you guys next year. Take care of yourselves and have a merry Christmas.